Who was the greatest player with and against? Uh, playing with would be uh, a guy called uh, Michael Jones, 1987 World Cup and a 91 World Cup. Uh, just a phenomenal uh, individual. Um, very, uh, very athletic. Um, made things look very easy. Uh, the best players I played against, I'm going to have to say two guys, because it's not normally the number eights I actually play against. I play against open side and blind side flankers. So the two guys I'm going for is uh, Richard Hill from uh, England, and the other guy is a guy called uh, Ruben Kruger from South Africa. Fantastic individuals, quite quite similar players, but I felt that Richard Hill and uh, Ruben Kruger should have. I, I always told them that they should have been playing for the All Blacks because they're always on our side at the ruck time. So, yeah, great players. Why does uh, why is the New Zealand so good at rugby? Um, I just think we are. I just think we're um, collectively. Uh, yeah, we're a, we're a small nation. Everyone says that we always punch above our weight, but I think it's ingrained in us uh, from a, a as a young child. Um, it's it's very uh, territorial. Our provincial rugby in New Zealand is is very strong. So and that leads uh, to a lot of competitiveness. Um, and I think it's actually been the first time, but I think it's been running for two years, which I only found out uh, a couple of months ago, is that uh, the first 15 rugby in all games is live on Sky TV. So it places a lot of emphasis on, uh, on, on junior rugby, and I think that actually helps uh, the competition. But domestically, uh, we're strong, and then that sort of carries it on. It's the legacy of players that have, uh, uh, that have left it behind, and we just want to follow on. And, yeah, winning the World Cup um, just last year was not a fluke. How did I find the transition amateur professional? Um, nothing really. I was, uh, professionalism is not measured about money. Professionalism is about attitude. And uh, I would do exactly the same thing if I wouldn't get paid again. I would do it. Um, yeah, it's, I think it's, it's, all about, it's all about mindset and your will and your passion and, and your want uh, to do things. And, um, you know, I think it's, I think it's been good for the game. I think you know there's a there's a there's a big sacrifice. It's it's making sure that uh, players, when they experience it, because we you're seeing now a, a trend of players going straight from school straight into a professional environment, whether it's actually uh, sevens or the fifteens. Um, it's just making sure that they get themselves uh, an education behind themselves and to uh, reintegrate back into uh, normal life when they finish the professional environment. So, it's a uh, it's a uh, that's, I think that there is more of a test for a transition for a professional player. Uh, 1995, the drop goal? Yeah, 48. Oh, it's 48 and a half actually, don't get that right. Uh, you look, it, it's probably one of the best things I've ever done in my life. You know, I've played 100 games for the All Blacks, but uh, the best thing I can remember is uh, doing the drop goal. But yeah, there was a bit of, uh, there was a bit of pressure on. I know it was, it was just, well, we thought it was, it was only a semi-final, and uh, just it, it was needed. You know, uh, Jane Alomo was Jane Alomo was uh, stealing all the limelight because he'd already scored three tries. So I just thought, well, I'm not going to be able to score three tries. So I said, well, my best thing I've got in my locker room is a drop goal. And the opportunity came, and I I asked Will Carling prior to the game. I said, look, can you send me a little wee uh, slice a slice of ball and kick it to me, which he did happily. And after 18 minutes, and I slotted it straight through. So. Yeah, I was quite happy about that. I did others. Fantastically, I've, I've loved uh, sitting on the other side now because I had, I had 11, years, 11 years playing for the All Blacks and uh, you know, for, the whole, for the whole period of uh, being involved in the game, it's, uh, it's fantastic. Um, it's, it's a big sacrifice and now I've got a, a family. Um, I voluntarily uh, give my time to coach uh, at the my local club, uh, Windsor Rugby, and... Uh, I spend a lot of my time uh, training uh, my kids. I've got four daughters and two boys, uh, and about uh, teaching them about uh, skill. So I spent two hours this afternoon uh, training my uh, young daughter about how to kick a ball left and right foot. So uh, I've adapted and adjusted to uh, to normal life. Fantastic, love it. Any advice do you play in the f uh, for the for the uh, for future uh, England or wherever you uh, choose to play? is just to make sure that you uh, keep doing exactly what you've been doing. Uh, don't, don't think that because you're wearing an international, playing an international game, is that you have to actually try harder. 
sometimes it's actually is to uh, just do because coaches identify you and they pick you for the reason of uh, when you weren't noticed and all of a sudden you get elevated to the uh, to the international arena. I just look just 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 be yourself and just do the just do the basics. Keep yourself in the game and make sure that you uh, try and make less mistakes. And uh, when a coach tells you to do uh, what he's uh, what normally he would do, you'd uh, you'd you'd engage on that, but don't complicate things. Sometimes you can complicate it, and uh, and all of a sudden that bridge becomes too far. So, but uh, yeah, and as well, I always say to enjoy it. Enjoying is the most important thing. Since you mentioned that one of the best players you played with was in the back row was Richard Hill. Yes. And I had the pleasure to play with uh, Richard for five years at Saracens from when he was a real youngster coming up. And I remember him coming to Scotland in probably mid-90s. I was an old war horse really at those days. But a young man picked up the ball at halfway line against Gala, ran 50 yards. And I, he played for five years. He was a tremendous player. I feel very privileged to play with him. But I'd be interested in, on your views of why you thought Richard was such a great player. Uh, Richard was, he was one of those guys who was like a work, uh, his work ethic of uh, how he actually conducted himself uh, on the field. Uh, the, the, uh, sort of an analysis for, for him is that his, his, his worst game is about 82% and his best game <laughs> is about 85%. And you need guys like that. And my best game is about 50%. Well, I think, yeah, <laughs> I think it was a little bit more than that, but uh, it, wasn't, it, w it wasn't consistent. Yeah, yeah. So that's, you know, there's, yeah. there's, there's still chances for you to come back in. You're going to come out of retirement to, you know, but in terms of as a, as, as a flanker, what yes. do you think were his major abilities as a flanker? One, to me, had, he had great pace. Right, yeah. He could always read the game. Yes. And he was probably years ahead of some of the flankers who are playing now in terms yeah. of being a workhorse. And as Clive Woodward would say, he's very much the unsung hero of that England team. If you want 100 percent it was Richard Hill, wasn't it? All that's the, right. Times, yeah. Yeah, and that's and playing against him uh, yeah. several times actually on either international or domestic yeah. is him uh, just making sure that he, he's always consistent and he always punches above the weight and it's it's always Richard Hill. He I sort of look at him like a, a Josh Confield. Josh Confield yeah. never has the fantastic game, but yeah. never has a bad game. And you need guys like that. You need guys that create a spark, yeah. like someone like. Uh, uh, Christian Cullen or yeah. Jonah Lomu who can actually change a game. Yeah. Whereas Richard Hill, you just need guys, you need soldiers that actually yeah. have to just do it every day. Yeah. Richard Hill was a, is the classic example when I was when I was captain. You'd never have to go up to Richard Hill yeah. and say, "Hey, look, you're actually in yeah. the moment." He's always in the moment because yeah. he just does yeah. what he does yeah. very well, and it's the efficiency of how he does it. And I think oh, one thing I remember about Richard Hill is that he's so level-headed. Yes, he, he would never tell you he played for British Lions or England. That's right. But he's a typical sort of rugby player. Yep. That he loved the sport, but unless you really probed him, he wouldn't tell you how successful he was. And I think he's a real sort of amb ambassador about the way rugby should be. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I totally agree with that. And uh, yeah, he's uh, he's uh, it's 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 sad that he's uh, that he's left the field. Yeah. If there was ever a player that England probably needed in the last World well, Cup, it's Richard Hill. <laughs> Richard yeah. Hill. So we've got one thing in common. We both know Richard Hill. Thanks, Inton. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you.